Okay guys, I want to jump straight into this Gen 3, Gen 4 piston and rod combination on the Gen 3 crank debacle. I want to just get right into it because there's so much information that I want to try to fit into a 15 minute video. So just, to re just so we can recap, in my previous video where I weighed Gen 3 and Gen 4 connecting rods only, no inserts, no bearings, this is my results. The 4.8 G Gen 3 rod was 618 grams. The 5.3 Gen 3 rod was 612 grams. Bump up to the fatty rods, the Gen 4s, the 4.8 4 was 657 grams. And the 5.3 Gen 4 rod is 650 grams dead on the money. So right there, First and foremost, you're looking at it between a 5.3 Gen 3 and Gen 4 5.3 rod, you're going from 612 grams up to 650. That's too much of an imbalance to run safely and maintain uh, bearings in the motor and fight harmonics and all the things that are going to be exacerbated or multiplied in a high horsepower application. Not saying you can't assemble it, I'm just saying that is not the proper way to build a race engine. So it's not if it'll break, it's when. Okay, so I just want to get that out of the way right at the beginning of the video. I've found some really inf interesting information regarding the pistons. Because we know the piston and rod assembly is going to be heavier between the Gen 4 and the Gen 3, but we didn't know by how much because we only weighed the rods, we didn't weigh the pistons. So common sense says, let's find out, did the factory make the Gen 4 pistons lighter to erase the balance issues between the Gen 3 and Gen 4 crank throws? Well, let's find out today. Okay, we're gonna use our Harbor Freight scale which you basically got to pick up to turn on because you can touch them buttons till you die and ironically a high portion of the products sold at harbor freight they come from overseas i think everybody can agree with that but when you turn on this el cheapo scale it starts out in american standard come on europe let's get in the game here you got to push a button on the back of it to get it to switch over to the metric system. So, I want to make sure that you can see this because I've been having a lot of trouble getting the weights to show up in the video. So let's weigh zero our scale. We are on grams. There's the metric system jumping right in there. Um, I wanted to point out, as cheap as this set of scales it is, it's it is actually sensitive enough that just the air from a ceiling fan can sometimes make it jump a gram or so. So keep your eye on the scale because I am I had to do the video in my house again in the kitchen because I could not get the lighting proper in the garage so that you could see the stupid scale readout. So, and if you don't keep touching this thing every periodically, this thing will shut off on you in a heartbeat. So here's what we got. We got a set of 4853 standard bore piston rings, GM by the way. We've got the retaining clips for the Gen 4 pistons. We got one set of uh, standard rod bearings. Uh, I have a Gen 3 4.8 flat top, 4. Point, it's a 4.8, hello, it's flat top, I apologize. Gen 3 4.8 piston and pin, and I happen to have both a flat top and a dish version of a Gen 4 5.3 engine with piston pin. Over on the far right, it's a 6 liter. We'll play with that later if we have time. But here is the ironic situation. I have found that GM was trying, at least, to keep the weights of the pistons and pins concentric or equal. They wanted them to balance the pistons and pins. Keep that in mind, because watch this information. And keep in mind, I've been having issues with this. This is a flat top 4.8 Gen 3 piston 
that I am going to put in my own turbo engine on a set of scat rods, but that's a different different topic. So, so what we're looking at here is 407 grams. That is your run of the mill 2002 4.8 standard bore piston. No pin, just a piston. 407 grams. Now, in my pre-video testing, that thing weighed between 406 and 407, and as I expected, the pin in this video is weighing 163 grams because based on where you set it on the scale and how much wind is touching it from the ceiling fan, that jumps between 163 and 164. But the number I want you to get in your head is 570 grams. When you add the 407 grams we got for the piston to the 163 of the pin, it's 570 grams. Keep that in mind. That's going to be important. Here's where your mind's going to get boggled. 5.3 dish top. This is, there's your receiver groove inside the pip, uh, piston pin board to verify it's a Gen 4. Dish top 5.3 standard bore. Check this out. 420 grams, right? All right, that's a good starting point. Now we're going to grab a flat top 2006 5.3. There's the little receiver groove for the pin or a clip, retaining clip for the pin because this is a Gen 4 piston. Flat top, don't forget, throw it on the scales. Okay, it, it's the wind, I'm telling you, but literally it's the same weight. The dish top and the flat tops are the same weight, 420 grams. Now I can set this because these scales vary. You can literally go up and down and see 420. All my pre-video testing put both those pistons at 420 grams with a consistency, okay? Now keep in mind, I am using a Harbor Freight scale and I do have my ceiling fan on because I'm in the house in the summertime and I need it, so. Okay, so keep in mind, our piston and pin from the 4.8 Gen 3 combined to 570 grams. Both of our flat top and our dish piston, Gen 4, 5, 3 pistons, 420 grams. So now everyone's going to say, okay, well, Gen well GM, I guarantee they did something different with the pins then to make up for the weight. This is the dish top pin. 150 grams 150 everybody see that now check this out flat top gen 4 5 3 150 grams add those together what do you get what was that number that I told you guys to keep in mind 570 grams so when you're looking at gen 3 and gen 4 Four, eight, and five, three pistons. When you add up their pistons and pin weights, even though they're different between Gen three and Gen four, you're looking at 570 grams. You know that to me is excellent. That shows to me that GM was at least trying to balance out those assemblies. The problem is with the stupid connecting rods. Because when you look at, now oh, this isn't going to be a fair, I do have the information written down because I do have a, a, four, a Gen 3 4.8 rod that came out of my 2002 engine. But I was going to show you the difference between that and a Gen 4. But this is a 5.3, 5.7, rod. And that's not a fair comparison because it's a different length and all that. But taking information from previous videos, when you look at the connecting rod, between a 5.3 and a 5, I mean, I'm sorry, a Gen 3 and a Gen 4 5.3 engine. So imagine this one if you could show a Gen 3 next to it. So a Gen 3 5.3 rod, 612 grams, right? So what are we looking at? 612 for a 5.3 Gen 3 rod jumps all the way to 650 grams when you go to this big fat mama jama 
I call it the fat boy of the world that can hold up to what 800 wheel horsepower is what everybody's claiming anyway. And I will point out this thing has some heat damage on the floater end that the motor though, know, because apparently this thing was having an oiling issue or something in that 2006 Monte SS, which is a weird uh, L34 sideways 5.3. But that big fat rod weighs 650 grams. So if you do the math, take your 650 grams, minus off your 5.3, 612, that's 38 gram difference. Now, because we have established that people for decades built board over engines without rebalancing their assemblies, I mean, I'm guilty of doing it in a Pontiac 400 where I bored it 30 over, used the factory, you know, crankshaft and connecting rod, but used a TRW replacement piston but I did bore it 30 over and I was like, I'm not spending the money to rebalance it because at that time I couldn't afford it and I just wanted to go racing. That motor's still in service. I built it in 1992. Okay, I will throw that out that it had to have been beyond 10 grams. I would almost guarantee it was beyond the 10 gram plus or minus that's the industry standard on rebalancing your assembly. That engine is still in service. Uh, I ran it off and on at the racetrack for years. And the person who bought my 71 Ventura has actually run drag week in that vehicle every year since 2012. And uh, he's just now getting to the point where he thinks the piston rings need, you know, replacement. So he's wanting to go to a bigger cubic inch instead of the 406. So. That goes to show that there is some wiggle room. I would say beyond the 10 gram limit, um, if you're just building a play toy and you're just gonna run it and you don't care if you have a little bit of an issue with bearings or knocking bearings out of it or whatever, it's kind of your call. Sorry about that, bump the camera. But 38 gram difference is a lot. That's a big difference in rotating assembly, but you got to keep in mind part of that weight is connected to the crank journal. Maybe that offsets it somewhat, but I wouldn't think so based on what the machine shops have told me. So here is a standard set of rods. I kind of got off on a tangent there. We got to turn it back on. Oh, look, we're in America again. Let's go back to Europe. Where's the little button back there? There we go. Come on, Europe, get in the game. Here we go, boom. Come on, center yourself out there. Here is a set of piston rings, standard bore 4853 GM. Should be 30, oh, it's showing 33 now. Let's try it again. It's always been 34 grams every time I freaking weighed it, but today, there we go, 34. So now you're looking at your piston pin and your rings coming in at 604 grams right that's going to be consistent all the way across the board whether it's a gen 3 or gen 4 4 8 5 3 flat top dish doesn't matter you're looking at 604 grams now some something that i wanted to weigh that most people are asking about but to me, it doesn't really do that much difference, but they do make you bring in your bearings when they balance your rotating assembly. Standard 4853 bearing, 41 grams. Okay, so if you need that to put into a calculator or to tell your machinist or whatever when he's trying to give you a recommendation, that's where you're at. 41 grams on the bearing, 34 grams on the pistons and rings, and ta-da, ta these things will either not weigh anything or they will only weigh two grams. For the most part, these little retaining clips have never weighed more than two grams. And if you put them on the scale real lightly, they don't weigh anything at all. So there's your information. Take that information, use it. Make an informed decision on whether you want to run the four, four, I'm sorry, the G, Gen 4 internals in that 5.3.